I can almost bet you that the Freemason that wrote the book of demonology has a book sitting right in your living room. All right, let's see it. King James published this book of demonology just a few years before he published the Holy Bible. It tells all about his belief in witchcraft and magic. You can see right here, it was printed in 1603. So King James, the Freemason, got his book of demonology out before he published his version of the Holy Bible. You can just hear the angels sing with this cover, can't you? More fitting cover. Those are the witches on the cover of the King James book of demonology. So it sounds an awful lot like this creator is trying to suggest that King James was a practicer or a promoter of magic, witchcraft, and demonology. And if that is the case, then that's the exact opposite of the truth. The very first page of the book explains the purpose, and that is for King James to resolve the doubting hearts of many, both that such assaults of Satan are most certainly practiced, and that the instruments thereof merits most severely to be punished. This book is precisely about combating demonology and about hunting down those who practice magic and witchcraft. Just know that Methuselah, Noah, and Shem wrote the history of the world as they knew it right before the flood, and these columns survived the flood. So this tradition that two pillars were inscribed with the history of the world by antediluvian folks that survived the flood and were used as sources by Moses comes from Josephus. And this chart is obviously trying to gin up evidence for that tradition, and it fails miserably because anyone with any kind of education in any Southwest Asian history can immediately spot the inscription on the left as the black obelisk of Shalmaneser III, complete with the depiction of the Israelite King Jehu bowing before Shalmaneser III in the top register. Here's an image of that obelisk. The inscription is very easy to read. It was executed in the mid to late 9th century BCE by the Assyrian king Shalmaneser III. And the inscription has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with antediluvian history. Additionally, on that timeline of the Bible, it depicts this pillar as being over 20 feet tall, and in the real world, it's about six and a half feet tall. One thing it doesn't look like King James did was change any of the words of the Holy Bible because when they were found in the Dead Sea Scrolls thousands of years later, the words matched up exactly. So there are two main problems with this claim. The first is that the Dead Sea Scrolls actually have numerous variant readings that would result in differences in an English translation. So the King James Version does not exactly match what was discovered in the Dead Sea Scrolls. The other problem is that King James actually did impose rules about changing some words. There were a small number of very important ecclesiastical words that King James required the translators use, such as church and priest and things like that. And there's also an argument to make that King James is responsible for the removal of a few occurrences of the word tyrant in the translations that came before the King James Version. For thousands of years, sealed up in a cave, the book of Genesis sat right next to the book of Enoch 1, and right next to the book of Giants, and right next to the book of Jubilees. And somehow, they were all taken out of the Bible over time. So it's not accurate to say that these things were taken out of the Bible because there was no such thing as a Bible when these things were considered authoritative and genuine. And by the time the Bible was created, these things had already fallen out of favor. I think it would probably be more accurate to say that uh, these things lost their status as authoritative scripture over time. And in the 1940s when we found the Dead Sea Scrolls, the truth was uncovered. Well, we had already known about things like First Enoch and Jubilees and the Book of Giants for many, many years. In fact, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church had included First Enoch in their canon for over a thousand years. And so we already had that text, and we already knew that texts like Jude were quoting from it. So I don't know that the truth was uncovered so much as we got a lot of additional data to help us better understand the development and transmission of these texts. I don't think old Jack Wagon over here sold too many of them books because I've never even heard of it before <laughs> until now. On the contrary, King James' book was quite influential, and there's an argument to make that Shakespeare's Macbeth actually 
takes some of its representation of witches and their rituals from this text and from King James' involvement in some of these witch trials. The book also influenced the development of a lot of the methodologies that were used for hunting and trying witches in later years.